All right, biology students, we are jumping into our second unit today, which is our sales unit. And today's lesson is just a brief overview of sales in general. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of something called the sale theory. Uh, and then we're going to move into classification of sales. Um, in unit one, we talked about characteristics of living things. And so just a reminder that all living things have organization. All living things are made of cells. So from the smallest organisms like protists to um, larger organisms like the alligator you see on the screen, they're all comprised of cells. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to discuss how this idea came to be. I'm going to introduce you to something called the cell theory. We're going to learn about the scientists who helped develop the cell theory. And it all started with the invention of the microscope. Um, so when the microscope was invented, lots of scientists went out and grabbed it. Um, now, this was a primitive microscope. It doesn't look anything like what we know of as the microscope today. But this piece of equipment helped scientists learn more about cells. And then from there, uh, what we know about biology was changed forever. Uh, I'm not going to go through each individual scientist, but if you are having to write this information down in your notes, you might want to pause the slide um, or pause the video rather um, so that you can get down the information. But you can see here, starting with Robert Hooke in uh, his idea of what the cell looked like. He coined the term the cell uh, when he was looking at quark under the microscope. From there, the cell theory just kind of took off. Um, so I do want to show you this picture because this is a primitive microscope that Robert Hooke used. This is what it would have looked like in his day. Uh, and again, he looked at quark cells under this microscope. And you can see on the left um, what that image looked like to him when he looked at at the cork under the microscope. And so he said it, look, they, it looks like tiny rooms. And from that, he coined the term the cell. Now, what is the cell theory? And you definitely need to make sure that you get this down in your notes because we're going to talk about this um, for the entire unit. So the cell theory was developed um, in part by many of the scientists that we saw on the previous slide, and it has three components. So the first thing you need to know is that all living things are made of one or more cells. A second part to the cell theory is that cells are the basic unit of life. And then a third component to the cell theory is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So at some point in this unit, we are going to highlight one of those parts of the cell theory, and we're going to dig a little deeper and talk about it. But you just need to know for right now that the cell theory um, has three components. All living things are made of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of life, and all cells come from pre-existing cells. Now we have two different classifications for cells. So cells are either prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Um, if we are talking about them as nouns, then we say prokaryote, eukaryote. Um, but if we're describing the cells, we say prokaryotic and eukaryotic. There are some similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and we're going to jump into that in the next slide. But there are some differences between the two. So you can see here, um, if we were to compare prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and just come up with a list of differences, um, it would be on your screen, and it is. So just make sure that you get this in your notes. Uh, and I'm going to go through each, each difference. So prokaryotic cells typically are smaller than eukaryotic cells. And the reason why is because we're going to see uh, in an image in a couple slides that eukaryotic cells are made up of a lot more parts or organelles than prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells tend, tend to be more simple, um, and so they're, they're naturally smaller. Now, prokaryotic cells are always unicellular, meaning they're comprised of one cell, whereas eukaryotic cells can be unicellular, but most of the time they are multicellular, me meaning that they're made of many cells. Now, prokaryotic cells, they do not have a nucleus. Eukaryotic cells, on the other hand, uh, they have a nucleus. So a great way to remember this is pro rhymes with no. So prokaryotic cells have no nucleus. 
U rhymes with true. So eukaryotic cells have a true nucleus. I don't know if that'll help you out, but um, if you'll remember that, it'll help you remember that prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. Eukaryotic cells do. Prokaryotic cells do not have membrane-bound organelles, whereas eukaryotic cells do. And we'll look at some images um, of, of examples of that in some future slides. Uh, now, the DNA for prokaryotic cells, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have DNA, but the DNA in prokaryotic cells is going to be more circular in shape, whereas eukaryotic cells, uh, the DNA is more linear. And then you also need to know some examples of organisms that are prokaryotes versus organisms that are eukaryotes. So you can see on the screen, um, prokaryotic organisms would be things like bacteria and archaea, which are found in really extreme environments. And then examples of eukaryotic cells would be like plants, animals, fungi, and protists. So here is an example of an illustration of a bacteria cell, um, which is a prokaryotic cell. And you can see uh, it is made up of organelles, just like a eukaryotic cell would be. But you can see the difference between the two. You've got a lot of organelles going on with the plant and animal cell. Whereas with our prokaryotic cell, you do not have as many organelles. Now, some of the organelles do overlap. So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But you can see here how many more organelles make up eukaryotic cells and, pro and um, band prokaryotic cells. All right, so we've mentioned the term unicellular and multicellular. So just make sure you know when we say unicellular, we mean that it's comprised of just a single cell, one cell. Some examples would be bacteria, and then some eukaryotes are unicellular, like uh, the amoeba, uh, paramecium, even yeast. And then many cells uh, means that the organism is what we call multicellular. So examples would be plants, animals, most fungi are multicellular. And these cells, whether they're unicellular or multicellular organisms, these cells work together in these organisms for a common um, function. Now, this is the first time uh, you may have heard of organelles. So organelles are small structures inside of a cell that have specific functions. We are going to take a whole lesson over the different organelles found in uh, plant cells, animal cells, and prokaryotic cells. So that will come up in a future lesson. But I just want to introduce you to the definition of organelles today and just let that kind of marinate for a while. Now, there are organelles that are present in all cells, so prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And those are the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, the ribosome, and then DNA. Now, DNA is going to be found in different places in prokaryotic cells than in eukaryotic cells, uh, but both are comprised of DNA or both have DNA. So you can see here, here's a plant cell, has um, a plasma membrane or a cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, uh, and DNA, which is found in the nucleus. And then you have a prokaryotic cell here, still has DNA. Just like with a eukaryotic cell, a plasma or cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, and DNA. All right, that ends our lesson for today, and I will see you in the next lesson.